how can you be happy here on a prison yard with all this chaos going on around you and you're, you're just full of joy. And then I was out on the yard and I heard these guys complaining about a program that was going on. I noticed there was these guys walking around with these books that said 40 days of purpose. And these guys are standing on the yard, they're complaining, man, this is, this program really sucks. And the guy goes, yeah, I can't stand it neither. And so I'm listening to see what they're complaining about and what they were mad about was that since these guys were going to this program, they stopped stealing the sugar out of the chow hall so they couldn't make their pruno no more. So this program was changing people's lives. I hit my knee and I asked God, if you're for real, show me something because uh, I'm tired. I'm so tired, I don't even want to live anymore. Uh, I came to Jamestown after running crazy, doing drugs and alcohol my life. Uh, came from a broken family, and he ended up in jail for uh, murder charges. I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ, but I also found tools to cope with any situation I got into. So I was never able to guide myself on my own, and the Lord Jesus Christ helps me through that now. I found God again, and I learned how to deal with the situations through Celebrate Recovery. I am now the Celebrate Recovery ministry leader in City Church in Reading. Um, we serve 80 to 100 people every week, and it's a growing ministry. I see lives change all the time. My past has consequences, but they don't dictate my future. I still have to deal with the consequences of my felony, but I walk in the glory of God, and He continues to amaze me at what he does. And I just, I can't encourage people enough to get involved with Celebrate Recovery, the life-changing power of it, to get involved in your church, to stay connected. That day, I was telling God I'm sorry. And he answered for the first time. It was like, like, like a light switch that turned on. It was like, the revelation that was given to me was God hears, and he hears you. And it just like totally blew me away. And then I, I, all the pain, all the sorrow, all the disappointment, all the anger, all the hurt, I literally felt it leave my body like a weight lifted up off of me. And I was utterly filled with joy. God, it's amazing, God knew what he was doing. He brought me to a chapel. He brought me to a place where I could use my talents that he gave me to glorify him. Uh, I got, and it gave me safety. And then we got to do 40 days of purpose. And then we got to do celebrate recovery. And I got to learn about God and I got to learn about Jesus Christ. And I got to learn about how to deal with my hurts and my habits and my hangups. And I, you know, and I got to grow in Christ and I got to begin my own identity in Christ. And I want to thank God. I want to thank God for uh, Celebrate Recovery Inside. If I came out with gusto, wanting to serve God, everything that I was doing in the prison system, I came out. I, I, I Celebrate Recovery built me up to speak in front of people. I've been to NA. I've been to AA. I've been through all that. And I just knew that I needed, I needed something that's going to help me, that's going to be Christ-centered. I didn't own, I, I need help with my addiction, but I need, I needed help from Jesus. That's what I needed help from. And so that's why it was so, so, um, so easy for me to step into Celebrate Recovery and embrace it. And I look forward to, um, just growing and growing and being, just being the God, being a person that God has planted, planned me to be. I'm thankful. I no longer have to use. I no longer have to do crime. I can be a good man today. And I live in faith that I'm forgiven. It's been a blessing and I wanna thank the Celebrate Recovery team that goes inside of prison. There was times where I was going through the most difficult times of my life 
were seeing the love of the sponsors come in on their own. My sponsors sacrificed their own time to drive into a prison and love on me. That made a big difference. I was a little reluctant because uh, I had worked in a women's prison ministry for years, and I, I thought, you know, going to a, a prison full of men, and, you know, I'd never been there, and we've all seen what the pictures are on TV, and so I was intimidated. Um, and I finally did decide to go. God nudged me enough, and I finally listened, and I found that, you know, the men were just absolutely godly, wonderful people. Um, they're some of the, some of the godliest men I think I've, I've met have been inside the prison. Um, and it's just the ministry itself, it's amazing how much you get blessed as a volunteer. So I heard about a bunch of the awesome ministry that was going on there and how their lives were being changed by Jesus. And there was like a waiting list of people that wanted to go in, but they couldn't because they didn't have enough volunteers. For each volunteer that went in, 20 guys, or 25, could go in and hear about God and Jesus and be saved and go through recovery program, and all I had to do was show up. And then I went in, and I was quite surprised at how um, free it was. So I'm in prison, but it's freer in this church setting on the inside than I feel in my church on the outside. I've been involved in prison ministry now since uh, 2003 when uh, a friend of mine invited me to uh, come help him put on the 40 days of, of purpose at the prison. I was real excited to be able to help uh, take this program into the prison. Uh, guys uh, not only finding Christ but uh, Christians who'd maybe gone sideways or kind of drifted away just kind of getting re-energized and really working toward reaching those uh, around them for the cause of Christ. So I really have considered it to be a privilege to be a part of this ministry and, you know, kind of feel like I'm one of the least likely uh, people that God would use to do something like this, but it's, uh, it's a love that God has put in my heart and uh, He just keeps bringing us volunteers as we need it. Sometimes it gets a little tight, but we have a a great group of volunteers and just uh, pray that uh, things continue. I was pre pleasantly surprised that what I got in return was amazing. I, um, these men and women became instantly my brothers and sisters in Christ. I was able to witness church being done inside these prison walls. Um, to a greater degree, much better than what I was seeing on the outside. And, um, and these brothers and sisters in Christ um, became people I looked forward to every week. And um, Jesus became very real as it was lived out through these lives. But bottom line is that it became clear that um, God was moving not only in their lives, but in my life as well. And I, um, I believe I grew along with them and in my relationship with Christ. And um, I, with a very happy and grateful heart, um, would recommend anybody. Today, I can tell you that um, I feel more fulfillment and reward than I could have ever have thought would have been possible. And so I felt the Lord kind of pulling on my heart, saying that maybe this is something that He would have me do. But as too often in life, I. I reflected and thought, well, why would he have me do that? Um, I'm, I'm certainly not the one that's the most prepared. I was quite uh, overwhelmed when I first went there, uh, very nervous and very hesitant. As we've brought the word of Christ alive in, into the jails, we've seen a great response to that. The greatest challenge I have set before us now is to build team members. Um, there's, 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 there's not enough people answering the call. And to me, that's one of the greatest shocks and, and, and dismays in my life. From, from, from being saved from such great places, I would think that we would eagerly step out and, and want to share this news with a world that is dying to hear uh, a message.